Okay, let's watch the pirating video. Hello, YouTube! Pirating is based... <laughs> That's a strong start. I... cannot condone it. <laughs> Firstly, that's my legal belief, and secondly, that's also my belief. I don't really like pirating games. <laughs> I don't really like pirating games. <laughs> I... No, I... I... I, I don't. I love pirating indie games. Recently, a oh, he's out gonna talk about that one. I've I've... Yeah, okay, he's gonna talk about that bitch. Yeah, I've seen this one. I love pirating indie games, bro. This guy posted this as rage bait, and the actual developer developer of the game responded was like, "You do you, bro. Enjoy it. If you want to pirate it first, go ahead, do it." Million views where a user on Twitter had posted an image of themselves downloading the indie hit first person shooter Ultra Kill. And the solo developer who made that game, going under the name Hakita, responded to the user saying, As creator of said game, you should support indies if you can. But culture shouldn't exist only for those who can afford it. Ultra Kill wouldn't exist if I hadn't had easy access to movies, music, well, and games growing up. It was a pretty based up. view. If you don't have pretty money, based. you can support via word of mouth. Fucking based take from a developer, man. So fucking based. That line of culture shouldn't exist only for those who can afford it is beautiful. It's poetry, yeah. and honestly, it couldn't be any more true. Lately, we've heard nothing but these CEOs and gaming industry heads coming out talking about how the industry is shrinking and they're worried about the future of gaming and how they need to appeal to a wider and broader modern audience. And the bell is tolled. It's been ringing loud and clear and everybody can hear it except for these guys. See, because gamers today have been doing whatever they can by any means necessary to play the games that they want to play. And that's only because these CEOs and the heads of the industry are more concerned with the payers rather than the players. If you've watched any of my videos, then you know... Well, damn. Pirate from Ubisoft, see no problem there. Yeah, with how greedy fucking companies have gotten, they kind of get what they deserve, you know? Like, personally, I'm just not gonna fucking play the game. Personally, I'm just not gonna fucking play the game. If you still wanna play the game and don't wanna support them, then yeah, well, I guess. There's always that DR har har option. You know? You do you in that case. In that case, you do you. In all honesty. I, I'm not gonna look down upon you if you wanna play a game from them, but they suck ass. Sure. They had it coming. 100% they had it coming. Well, this is a topic that I'm pretty passionate about, and that's- Especially, like, without, like, the fucking ridiculous prices of fucking- Oh my god, all the versions of the games, all the prices, all the pre-order shit, the- Oh, I can't- I, Oh my- Let's watch the video. Let's watch the video before I go off on a rant. <laughs> holding publishers and studios accountable for the lies they weave in the graves that they've been digging themselves, all in the name of profit. Year over year, as the gaming industry has grown and gaming has gotten more popular, it's become less about the players and more about their investors. Marketing minds that are taking control, these profit-seeking vampires with no understanding of how creative industries work, are wreaking havoc on beloved studios and franchises, bleeding them dry and oh, leaving yeah, their carcasses man. out to be picked by investment vultures. Oh, so fucking bad. Anime and manga are also good examples. The, the problem with anime and manga I have is, for example, if there would be like one big... Um... Is it a publisher? No, not a publisher. A distributor? I think it's called a distributor. Like, in case for, like, Quenchy Girl, for example. The problem is, I'd love... I would love to support Crunchy Roll if they had all the anime that I wanna watch. They don't. And sometimes they even kick the anime out again. What's the point? What's the fucking point? I would love... I would absolutely fucking love to support all the fucking anime that I watch. You know how I do it instead? I buy the merch now. I buy merch now. And worth of mouth, obviously. I hate it when it takes on good anime that I was wanting to watch too. Oh! Oh! Oh my god, that's a pain. 
That's 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 pain. Is Kitsu's mouth malfunctioning a little, or is my monitor skipping frames? I don't know. Might be my mouth mis malfunctioning. <laughs> it might be my mal mouth malfunctioning. I don't. I don't know. Still on the progress of fixing it and getting it proper, man. It shouldn't be a surprise to anybody at this point why piracy is on the rise, but let's break it down piece. One huge factor, like looking away from the game developers and the shittiest companies, right? Like looking away from them, like looking away from that inflation, man. Fucking inflation. Bruh. Like I love, I love Square Enix, right? Like I don't know, I don't have any beef with Square Enix. Like Square Enix isn't, like, as bad as, like, uh, others, like Ubisoft and EA and all that shit, and Blizzard at this point, too. Like, I think Square Enix is doing quite all right. But... Do you know how much FF16 costs? Do you know how much that game baseline costs? Uh, Shiro taking a bit, it seems. You want to watch every anime you want? Then spend 10 to 20 euros each month for about 3 to 5 streaming yeah. services at once. Yeah. Isn't that convenient? So convenient. So convenient. Ugh. FS16 costs $80 base edition. And I do have the PS5. I do have the PS5. I really wanted to play the game. I really did want to play that game when it came out. $80? No. No. Bro, at 50% off, that bitch is still $40. That bitch is still $40. And that's how much some games cost baseline. <sighs> they turned FF... 17? Pimp just Into a minimum of three games? What, 17? Piggy was a pimp, thanks for the prime. But did you mean to say 17? Or did you mean 16? Into a minimum of three games. Like, if... If FF16 has as much content as three games, then sure. Then sure. Oh, seven. Did I misread it? Did I misread it? My bad. My bad. I, I swear I read 17. Oh my god, I'm stupid. I, I was thinking incorrectly. My bad. Yeah, FF7, they, the remake, they turned into three games. That's crazy, man. Yeah, 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 five. My bad, my bad. I was thinking too much of 16 there. I was thinking so too much of 16. $80 is too much, personally. I'd be uh, sailing if it wasn't for DRM that just ruins performance on PC. DRM? I'd be sailing? I'm sorry, I don't quite understand what you're trying to say. To be fair, they wanted to do more with the original game, but couldn't with the hardware, if I recall correctly. They, I think, like, I haven't played any of the FF7 games, but from what I've heard, that the FF7 remakes are, are a pretty good um, success. By hmm. piece, so we understand why this is going on, and... Why it's going to get bigger and why trying to stop it is the worst choice that these companies can make. Oh, okay. This morning, another major food company getting set to raise prices at the grocery store. There it is. The inflation. Millennials are getting priced there out it of is. cities. Researchers don't necessarily think the trend will change. It's not the news drivers wanted to wake there up to Wednesday morning. $80 as gas baseline. In a set. A record high. Dear Recently, Digital Rights Management. Uh -huh. workers applied to an average of 30 jobs only to receive an average of four callbacks or responses. While this is what's happening in the U.S., this is happening all across the world. Yep. Plain and simple, money is tight. And while it might not be tight for everyone, it might not be tight for you, it's rough for a lot of people right now. It's crazy. That game developers actually see gaming as, like... A, um, what do you call it? A privilege now. You know? Something like that. Gaming shouldn't be a privilege. Everyone should be able to game. Everyone should be able to game, man. 
Oh my god. No. As an example, when games like Ubisoft's Assassin's Creed Shadows and Star Wars Outlaws are selling for $130 for the full, a joke. full game first day experience what a without joke. any regional pricing, Oh, yeah, and it's not even working anymore. That's over 700 Brazilian real. That's costing one-fourth of the average income of somebody in Brazil. You carry that pricing over to other countries with even lower average incomes and even less valued currencies, and one single game could be something that they could be saving months for. The cost of new video games is significantly impacting low-income consumers and making it more difficult for them to access some of these new releases. As prices for everyday essentials rise due to inflation, discretionary spending, including entertainment like video games, becomes more constrained. This is particularly evident in low-income households, which spend a larger portion of their income just on necessities, and they have less flexibility when it comes to price increases. So what is someone to do when a game just isn't accessible for them? And when even when they games have not are on much sale, of a choice. it's still too expensive. Well, they pirate. Yep. Piracy is... Yep. I can't blame anyone. I can't blame anyone who pirates for the sole reason of they can't afford it. I I am no one to blame you. No, I can't blame you. If you can't afford it, go on. Go on. If you can't afford it, go on. Is a service issue. Plain as day, as simple as can be. It's a famous line said before. Gabe Newell probably said it, I think, if I'm not mistaken, or something like that. But what's going on right now is that there is a severe lack of regional pricing in the industry there's a lot of games that are out there that are not fairly priced in every region and as the problem with regional pricing is also that a lot of fucking dumbasses abuse it steam has hammered down pretty strongly on this now i heard of people I've had friends who did this, who I told that this is um, pretty scummy to do, that he would buy games with, Tur with a Turkish Steam account because it was cheaper. Ugh. <sighs> God, man, so fucking bad. Why would you do this, man? Ugh. Like, at that point, just fucking pirate, man. Like, at this point, what are you doing? At this point, just pirate, you know? So stupid. Such, there's a lot of players that are out there that just don't have access to these games. It's not realistic for them to be able to afford any of these. And I realize there's going to be some people that are going to hop in and go, hey, Mr. It's Schreiber, a shitty YouTube thing guy, to do. Yeah, it is. It is such a shitty thing to do because it ac actively also harms Turkish like players. You know, it actively harms their economy. It actively made Steam hammer down on it. Now they don't have proper regional pricing anymore. There's tons of cheaper games that are out there. There's indie games that are out there. There's free to play games, man. There's free to play games. And. Well, you're right. There are free-to-play options. You got games like Warframe or Genshin Impact or Fortnite and stuff like that. And while that stuff can work, keep in mind at the exact same time, a lot of games like that are built to take advantage of those kind of people. Yeah. Not all. Yep. Yeah. If it's free, you're the product. <laughs> if it's free, you're the product. Them, but a lot of them are. And what I mean by that is, is that it's much easier to get somebody to spend three, five, maybe ten dollars than it is to get them to spend seventy or hundred. Oh yeah, absolutely, it's absolutely. Especially if you do it online, like you don't actively see the money burning. You don't actively see the money leaving your bank account. You know, like you don't actively like hand over a bill. It's like five dollars there, ten there, three there, and suddenly at the end of the month you have no fucking money left. But you don't see that in the moment. Don't forget that there are games wanting control over every single part. Some are protected for a reason of your PC. There, yeah, that, that is also true. Games are made for the whale to buy the ultimate edition and all the microtransactions nonsense. Those games, those companies that create those games, fuck them. Fuck them. And saying that if I enjoy a free-to-play game, I will spend a moderate amount of money. If I enjoy a free-to-play game, I will spend 
money on it too if it has microtransaction. I have spent a lot of money on League of Legends. And in that, I am the product. I have made the money. I, I am the issue. I am the issue. <laughs> I am the issue. It's a way for them to be able to capture some of those sales that they haven't been able to get because some of those people can't spend that much money, but we can nickel and dime them. That's much easier to do. That's the part of the prevalency of microtransactions more than anything else. And keep in mind at the exact same too is that a lot of those games are built to take advantage of them also for being well, food for the whales more than anything else, the schools of fish that the whales feed upon. And one of the things that's kind of bothering me lately, especially thinking about when people point to free-to-play games for folks that don't have a lot of money, is that I'm wondering if a lot of this regional price locking isn't put in place specifically to try to drive those players into their free-to-play games in the first mm -hmm. place. And the reason being is because the more players that are there and the more players that aren't spending a lot of money that are there gives more fish for the whales to feed on. And also mm. on top of that, it emboldens the prices and emboldens the purchases that a lot of these whales will end up paying for because of the fact that there's more people to be able to show off their skins to, more people to beat them in PvP, more people to show off their characters to, and whatever else. And I think it's also really important to keep in mind too is that while there are these free-to-play options and cheaper options, what if those aren't the games that these players want to play? Another key issue that's becoming more apparent year over year is digital only and online only. While the internet has been- Yeah. 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 Become more widely accessible over the years. A 2023 study shows that approximately 67% of the world's population has access to the internet in varying degrees, but that still leaves 2.6 billion people without access at all. And keep in mind, Jesus, I said varying man. degrees. While this study shows that they have access, the wide majority of that is likely not the high-speed internet that many of us- Oh yeah, here's something. Here's, here's one thing. For example, I can give an example on this. Um, in regards, for example, for Egypt. I have a handful of Egypt, Egyptian friends. Um, and their internet, their internet works the following. Firstly, it's fucking shit. Firstly, the, the speed is fucking shit, right? Let's get the speed out of the way, but that, that isn't the worst part. Their internet operates on a quota system. They have to buy a quota. They get a certain amount of gigabytes a month. And if it's bent up, they need to buy more to top it up. You know how some mobile contracts work like how prepaid mobile works that's yeah what the fuck that's exactly it just like mobile data just like mobile data oh fuck off yeah oh fuck off egypt is fucked in that regard and they have to download games with that they have to download games with that man you download one game yep there goes the internet for the month like yeah it, it's awful i feel so bad for them man there are quite a few countries that do that, see? There's a few countries that do that. I, I know of Egypt, for example, because I have friends that live there and live this reality. It sucks ass. More, more of life becomes a subscription model, <laughs> literally, yeah. Enjoy, or even internet that's in their own household. Meaning that even if they have access, it's likely impossible to believe that any of them can even attempt to download Call of Duty yeah. Black Ops. And like, imagine having to constantly be online for a fucking game because of that. There, there goes your quota. There goes your life. Six is half a terabyte download before Activision releases the next Call of Duty. And we're not even talking about how playable online only games have put even more pressure on there and put even more games out of reach of players. I've seen far too many games over the last few years switch to playable online only even when they're widely single player experiences or even completely that single player That is ridiculous. That is so ridiculous. I just don't understand. Like, let us turn it off. Let us fucking play offline. Why do I need to be online for a single player game? I don't understand. Some of them are doing it because they want to make sure that players have access to DLC and online stores. Some yeah, okay, of it's because but most then let me turn it on for the time being. It's not that hard. It's not that hard. Consoles do it like that. Like the same game, literally the same game. The same game. Compared from PC to PlayStation, 
if you don't have a PlayStation subscription, you're good to go. It's so stupid. These games aren't even contained on the disc anymore. However, the vast majority of it is because they're using it for anti-piracy purposes. They're using your internet connection to verify your purchase and your license and give you access to the game. Which, I'll be honest, I think is something that is only then directly do it for serving a to second. exacerbate this issue of lower than projected sales that many of these companies have been pointing to. I mean, including these anti-piracy measures enforcing online only, sure, you're stopping a group of players that may play your games through illegal means. That's why uh, GOG is the gold star for game. You can have DRM free files. Damn. Nice. Most of does this greatly. If your internet crashes, it just says you are now offline mode and keeps playing like that normal. Yeah, that good job, Monsanto, but they should let you play offline from the go. And if you need to go online, you should have an option that says, okay, going online now, confirm. It loads for a second and now you're online. However, on the other hand, you're potentially cutting off access to the game from millions of other players that otherwise would have bought it. Let's you Let's do that in well? like Diablo okay. as an example. Both Diablo oh, 3 and Diablo, Diablo 3. Here it comes. They are back Here it to comes. Back Blizzard's fastest selling titles of all time, record breakers. I mean, the Diablo franchise is one of the most recognizable IPs in all of gaming. But when you have a game that appeals to that wide of a player base, that attracts that much in sales, that equally means there is just as large of an audience that's out there that would. Online should be opt in as much as possible. Agreed. 100% agreed. Bought and played that game if they had the ability to. But they didn't because Blizzard didn't make it available to them by locking a that mostly single-player experience to online only. Blinded well, by the allure well. of immediate sales, these companies are going for the bag when they could have gone for the bank the entire time. Personally, I find Unlucky. it hilarious that these CEOs are running to the media crying about how they're seeing the industry going downhill, how there's less people to be able to sell games to, how they're investors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's less people to sell games to, yeah. Right? How about just make a fucking better game? If you'd made a better game, you wouldn't have to drive the prices up because people would be wanting to spend the money on it. Simple as. Simple as. Make a good game and the people will come. You're upset. They're going to have to lay off. It's just part of business. Like, people love spending money. People love spending money. And if you give them a reason, to want to spend money, you will have happy customers. But if your game is garbage, it's not the issue that there aren't people that don't want to play it. It's that... Uh, the issue isn't that there's not enough people that want to play it. The issue is that people don't want to play it hands down, because it's bad. And fun fact, console version of Diablo 3 can actually be played offline, if I recall correctly. Oh my fucking god, there it is. There it is. <sighs> this you know they're reading the stars or whatever it might be trying to figure out exactly what they're trying to do next and it's all self-inflicted this is all things that they're doing to themselves literally it's like they didn't see the rake or even feel they felt the rake but didn't see the rake when they stepped on it that's probably the best way to say it and you know i think that sony and correction i love to spend money on things i like yeah that that's what i mean come on that's what i meant and hell divers 2 is the best example of this still to this day it is not available in over 180 countries that's over 90 percent of countries in the world that hell divers what? 2 is not available in you're doing this to yourself when there are less wow. players that have access to your games that means that you make less money that means that there's less people yeah. that are playing your game that means there's less people that are talking about your game that's but that's sony's fault it's not the developers right yeah 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 yeah, yeah. it is it is less people that are selling that game to their friends. When you don't make your games accessible, you make less money. Players have less simple. options. And then those players yeah, don't make options for themselves. For many, piracy has become a necessity, even more so when we start looking at legacy titles this and retro games. Moment. <laughs> piracy has increasingly become one of the only options that we have available to us for games preservation due to the evolving nature of digital downloads and often the prohibitive barriers that are imposed by these game publishers. As mm. digital distribution replaces physical media, many games are delisted from online stores, rendering them inaccessible to future generations. Yay! I love spending money on a game. Not a free-to-play one, right? But a game. Like a solo player game. That won't be available anymore now because... Or just online. Or just online. 
I can't play it anymore just because it doesn't go online anymore. Unlucky. Unlucky. Unlucky, I guess. I prefer physical copies, so though same. Same. But that's the collector in me. I prefer physical copies because I like collecting shit. <laughs> I like collecting shit. Additionally, if you look at DRM restrictions and online-only requirements, even legally purchased games become unplayable once servers for those yikes, games are man. shut down. Fucking we yikes! We just saw this with a slew of different games from Ubisoft, like The Crew. In regions where games are either unavailable or unaffordable due to economic disparity or regional restrictions, piracy offers the only viable means to access and preserve a lot of these cultural artifacts. Yeah. Without the unofficial... Here's another example of this, like, um, Pokemon games. Well, fucking old Pokemon games, man. The, 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 most of the DS games, you can't buy them anymore apart from second hand. Like, the DS games, you can only find them second hand and they're so expensive. And then you gotta have a DS still to play them. And they just don't support that shit anymore. So... Obviously, a lot of people go to pirating, like, fucking old Nintendo games because they still want to play those games. They're emulators, yeah. Like, oh boy. I wish, like, I wish Nintendo made DS games available again. Like, I want to play the DS games again. Not just as a remake. I want to play the originals channels that a lot of these players have access to a significant portion of gaming history is completely lost depriving future players of the joys that we've all had the chance to enjoy i'd argue that the vast majority of people that are out there pirating games for themselves trading pirated games or buying them aren't doing it because they want to do it they're doing it because they have to do it because there's no other options available to them again this yeah. is something that is ultimately brought on by the industry that's creating these games yep 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 Absolutely, absolutely. I personally, I'm gonna be fully honest, I'm too scared to pirate shit. Because Germany is cracking down on piracy so fucking hard. I'm too scared to pirate shit, man. I don't pirate shit. Because simply, as I said, too fucking scared. I'm not, no. Not pirating anything. Like, I knew, like, when I was growing up, I knew... Um, from my stepfather, he, uh, someone like one of his friends got literally that had got literally jailed. He got jailed for pirating movies. So no, I I ain't taking though. <laughs> I'm not gonna take my chances. So I'm I'm not gonna pirate. But if you are gonna do it because you can't afford shit, go for it. And if the game no longer is available and you really want to play it like what are you gonna do you know i'm not gonna judge you for it i'm not gonna judge you for it is what i'm i'm saying with that i'm not doing it but i'm also not judging it like i'm not condoning it either you know i'm not condoning if anyone does it if anyone does it in a harmful manner to like an indie developer just because they cba and because they're an asshole fuck them Right? Fuck that person. Fuck that person. Like, support indie developers, man. Like, support indie developers. If you have the money, fucking support them. If you're an asshole, fuck you. But other than that, if you don't have the money and if, if the game isn't available in that case, like, who am I to judge you? Games <laughs> and not the consumers themselves. Back in 2014, a passionate fan of the game PT, which is playable teaser, a critically acclaimed horror demo that was made by Hideo Kojima, found themselves in a difficult situation. The game, mm -hmm. which was intended to promote the now-canceled Silent Hills project, was suddenly removed from the PlayStation Store following Kojima's oh. departure from Konami. For players who oh. had already downloaded PT, it remained on their consoles, but for new players, they had no legal way to be able to access it. Recognizing the cultural and artistic significance of PT, this dedicated community fan took matters into their own hands. They distributed the game through various unofficial channels, ensuring that it could still be experienced and studied by future gamers and scholars. This act of piracy was driven by a genuine desire to preserve a unique piece of gaming history that would otherwise have been lost to time. Now we um. go and we look at how Nintendo has handled piracy and <laughs> Here we go. preservation by beating it over the head with a legal cudgel. Anybody yeah, that's fuck caught Nintendo, redistributing man. any of Nintendo's like, games. I love Pokemon, but fuck Nintendo, you know?
Like that. Why you do this? Like, if if you're gonna punish the people, at least like make it, make the game still be available. Like, ugh. games will face the full might of Nintendo's legal team. There is a high demand for old Nintendo games yeah. that they haven't been filling. Now, while they have released systems like the NES Classic and SNES Classic, both of them selling tens of millions of units, by the way, what there about is a the wide DS? variety of classic games Nintendo doesn't make available. While luckily there are still some working physical versions of these products that are still out in the wild, the demand for these games is so high and the yeah. supply of them is so low yep, that that's some of the these issue. prices have been jacked up to obscene highs yeah. by resellers. While the NES and SNES Classic were awesome releases, Easily double, they don't triple, include all of the games that were released original. on those systems, some of them being classics and favorites of many. Nintendo chooses to waste their legal fees chasing these sites and emulators rather than just making older games accessible and more affordable to everybody. Again, it's another company that's leaving money on the table for no good so reason stupid. and creating a piracy issue so on their stupid. own. Now, I want everybody to keep in mind that the NES Classic and the SNES Classic outsold modern consoles in the months that they were released in. Wow. That there was a massive hole waiting to be filled. Wow. There was a huge part of the market that was looking forward to being able to experience. Reseller, some of whom are uh, actually grifters. Screw those guys. Screw those guys. 100%, man. 100%. Fuck them. These kind of games again, or even experience it for the first time. I'm sure there's a ton of newer generation, younger generation yeah. players that are out yeah. there that wanted to play these games. They because those games are fucking timeless and amazing and were made by people that actually had a passion for gaming compared to people that just want to ma fucking make money, man. I've been hearing about them their entire lives, watching videos like this, and they finally got the chance to play. Fun fact, the Pokemon company thinks Nuzlocking is on the same level as ROM hacking? Oh my god. And on updated televisions with HDMI, and they went out and bought it too. There's play They want to buy these games. They want to play these games, and it's as simple as that. It's just crazy to me, looking at a company like Nintendo that's spending all this money. Are you sure you're just thinking of Nuzlocking? Are you sure you're not thinking of randomizing Nuzlocking? Like, you sure like, not thinking of, like, randomizing and not slogging? I mean, technically, people are still emulating the game in that case. That's one of the most stupid things they said. Like, are you sure it's just pure Nuzlocke? Because if you do it on your pure... On your vanilla... Um... Cartridge... On your vanilla cartridge, on your fucking console. I don't, I don't see how that would be an issue to anyone. If it's a randomizer, then you gotta, then you gotta in into the technical stuff. The Pokemon company is okay with Nuzlocke's, just not randomizers. That is a misconception. Thank you, thank you. That's what I was thinking. That's what I was thinking because randomizers. Uh, are still using emulators and oh, and slash or modding your console and game on legal fees fighting piracy that they created themselves if they would just make those games available and make them more widely accessible and affordable well then players are going to play them and then all of a yeah. sudden guess what you don't need to spend all this money on legal fees chances are you'll make far more you'll money make money doing it that way than the way that you're doing it right now look this isn't a video about why piracy is good because i don't think it's good it's obviously illegal and it's illegal for a good reason but at the exact same time it's not the pirates that are the problem here it's the companies now i want to roll yep. back to the initial tweet from hakita as creator of said game you should support indies if you can but culture shouldn't exist only for those who can afford it ultra kill wouldn't exist if i hadn't had easy access to movies music and games growing up if you don't have money you can support via word of mouth now, while I'm sure there are those that are out there that believe that those of low income or low income countries have a lot more to worry about than video games, Hakita is right. Status shouldn't be a barrier to happiness and culture, especially when that barrier is artificial. Games can be cheaper. Games can be more available. And artificial restrictions that are imposed by the industry shouldn't have any bearing on somebody's access to enjoyment, education, and art. I think he also points out something else that far too many have lost touch with. And it's something that's growing more obvious over the last few years. 
okay. players sell more games than marketing does. Now, I've brought this up That's in the past true. in a previous video. That is 100% true. Word of mouth is so much stronger than any advertising could ever be. I'm gonna take the word of my friends over the word of a fucking... Um... Of a, a, what's it called? Of a fucking advertiser, man. I'm always gonna take the word of a friend over advertisement. If my friend thinks the game is shit, I believe them. They're not shit. Simple as if my friend believes the game is great, I'm gonna be checking it out. Yeah. Yo, but back in April, Baldur's Gate 3's head of publishing, Michael Dallas, was talking about the popularity and the sales of Baldur's Gate 3 and his thoughts on video game marketing. He was quoted saying, Marketing is dead. It truly is. I can back this shit up, man. There are no channels anymore. It doesn't work. You used to have marketing, communication, and PR. Marketing was essentially just retail theory. You were trying to get your box on the right point of the store shelf. And you had partnerships with retail stores. Those pipelines are gone. That's now you've got true. The internet. Nobody's you need the internet. You need anymore. word of mouth. All of these channels we would use to market through are no longer really viable. So their function is also reduced by the fact that players just want to be spoken to. They don't want to be bamboozled. They just want to know what you're making, why you're yep. making it, and yep. who it's for. Yep. The reason I bring that up is because Hakita recognizes what many in the industry don't. Even players who can't afford to buy your games can help you sell your game. With the age of the internet and the prominence of social media, communication has been the best way to move products. Most people ignore ads. They do whatever they can do to try to avoid them. The more players that are talking... We all hate ads here, man. We all hate ads here. <laughs> who, many, who many in here are using ad blockers? Type in three if you're using an ad blocker. Type in three right now if you're using an ad blocker. Type in seven if you don't. Three if you use an ad blocker, seven if you don't. So many threes, look at that. Seven. Wow, we actually have some sevens. Damn, but mostly threes. Both? <laughs> Hold up. <laughs> Not on Twitch, though? Oh. Seven, I'm too stupid to know how to get that. <laughs> oh, sweet summer child, you are... <laughs> Oh, so adorable. <laughs> I'm a boomer with technology. Oh, it's a bit hard. You literally... Let me, let me, let me show you. <laughs> let me show you. Twitch and YouTube is gonna hate this, but literally... Add block extension. Let's say Firefox, because I'm using Firefox right here. There you go. Simple. Simple. And now you add it. Now you click this big red button and you add it and you're done. My employers hate me. <laughs> My employers hate me. <laughs> How do you know what you can trust or you can trust this one? I can tell you you can trust this one. I'm using this one on Chrome. I'm using this one on Chrome. Doctors hate her with this one single trick. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you should always be careful, that's true, but it's literally just an extension. This one exists for Chrome too. It exists for Chrome. I have uBlock, a lot of people swear on uBlock. I never used uBlock just because I didn't know them. I'm using this one, but uBlock works just fine. A lot of people swear on uBlock. And most browsers work on Chromium, which is Chrome's, like, um, skeleton in a sense, I, w I guess. Firefox works on Chromium, Opera works on Chromium. All these extensions work on all the browsers. So you literally type in adblock, extension, and your browser. Simple. Works on YouTube. For me, it even works on Twitch. This one even works on Twitch for me. For some others, this one doesn't work on Twitch. I don't know why. For me, it works on Twitch. For some others, it doesn't. But I have YouTube Premium on Twitch Turbo, so I don't use it on these sites. Yeah, I have YouTube Premium now too. 
as you can see here it says premium well shed is in the way so let me let me prove it to to the youtubes and to you guys here youtube premium i have youtube premium because i am a react channel i'm a react dandy and that's the least i could fucking do to other creators if i'm already if i'm already gonna quote unquote steal their content i might as well pay them for it you know but i don't want to sit through the ads so you know there you go fuck you twitch and fuck you youtube i gave away secrets <laughs> talking about your game means it's more likely to be noticed by more people and it's probably going to sell more copies it's just as simple as that the video game market is becoming more and more saturated year over year especially on the indie side of things and how many people do you think out of that 20.5 million views that that retweet got heard about ultra kill for the very first time what percentage Me. of those people maybe Me. Went and took a look at the game and then realized that it was a game that they wanted to buy and then they bought it? I haven't looked at what it. What are the chances that because I they forgot. bought it just because Short they really liked spend. the guy's take and wanted to support an indie developer? That but bro, it had like, what, 20 million views? Easy. Easy. So much advertising. So much free advertising. Thank you, kids. No problem. It was based. <laughs> and it was as simple as that. Look. You know, the thing is, is that I saw a lot of people that were posting in some of the comment section on that retweet that were saying, oh, how long is he going to say this until everybody's now pirating his game? And you know, the funny thing is with that is that, like, you can say what you will about folks that are encouraging it, but the vast majority of people just aren't going to pirate. And the reason why is because yeah. there's too many risks that are associated with it. Me yeah, me, example, I'm, I'm one of the people. I'm not going to games, not because I don't want to yeah. play for games for free. I, I don't want to anger the government. I started a YouTube channel in the first place. But it's because... <laughs> I only have one computer, and the last thing that I want to do is screw it up because I was trying to download and play a game for free. Same thing could be- Oh, I don't even care about the viruses that you could potentially get. I I'm too scared of the government. <laughs> I don't want to go to jail. <laughs> I want to go to jail! He said for people that have consoles, a lot of those folks don't want to have to go through the hassle or the risk of cracking those consoles for them to be able to play those games and play hacked games or play ROMs or whatever it might be. They don't want to have to deal with it. Yeah, I'm simply just missing out on playing those old Nintendo games that I really do want to play. They don't so, have to deal with yeah. the risk. Even more so, a lot of folks that are out there are playing games, they're playing them with friends, and the last thing they want to do is not be able to play with their friends online if they do have online access. So, like, the general consumer market isn't going to be interested in pirating games because it's too risky and it's too much of a hassle. The vast majority of those people are just going to want to go and just play the game. They're going to want to go and buy it. It's as simple as that. Yep. And... This is a service issue at the end of the day. It has nothing to do with the pirates. Piracy should be illegal. It's illegal for a good reason. Yeah. But at the exact yeah, same time, true. this is an issue that's created by the companies that are making... Yep, also true. Both can be true at the same fucking time. ...these games, and it's something that they have to fix. Players are going to find solutions for themselves. Consumers always find solutions for themselves. It's as simple as that. If you're not going to yep. provide me with the service that I require, I'm going to go find it from somebody else. That's what we do. If you're not going to sell me something for the price that I need you to sell it to me for, then I'm either going to wait or go buy it from somebody that's going to give me a better deal. And that's exactly what's going on right now. These companies yeah. are not filling needs that are in the market. And more and more, they mm -hmm, keep complaining mm -hmm, about mm -hmm. the industry going downhill, and it's them that are making these games less available. You want to make all the money? Make it where everybody can play your games. Prison but that's narrow. not what's happening. Whether that's <laughs> console exclusivity, whether that's online only, whether that's locked regional pricing or whatever it might be, Improve as a depth overcome. Yeah, yeah. There's all kinds of issues that are out there that these companies are causing, and they're the ones to blame for the piracy that they're creating. And they're the only ones that can fix it. Otherwise, yeah. players are going to find ways to play games. Players are going to do that. Simple yeah. as. Hope Simple you guys as. enjoyed this video. That's all I got. I did. It's a really interesting issue. I, 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 I mean, the dev is absolutely catastrophically based for his take it's absolutely fantastic i personally went out and bought the game pretty much after. i played the demo and really enjoyed it it's actually really sick to be honest with you i don't know how i didn't hear about it it's kind of one of those things <clears throat> you kind of get trapped in these circles of games that you always follow and you never really yeah, hear about some of these other that's indie games true that's like very that that true out there and the next thing you know all of a sudden you know you get exposed to it in one way or another and you're like holy shit it is right. Holy shit, man. I not see this. It's a hidden diamond. Mm. If you guys see some of the gameplay from the video, you might like it. Give it a shot. Anyway, thank you guys for watching the video. Stay cool. Stay righteous. Stay safe, my friends. Follow me on Twitch if you want to catch me reacting to news and things like that live, as well as, you know, sometimes playing video games, I guess, too. 
Uh, but outside of that. Oh yeah, that's what I do too. Yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> Mice. Mice. Family, 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 family. <laughs> family, 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 family. Corp Sunero? No. Thanks for watching, YouTubes. I really enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Good video. Good video. Good video. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye, YouTubes. Bye, YouTubes. Bye. Bye, YouTubes.